Hello everyone. In this video, let's learn how to build a modular cell grading machine. For those who are new, a cell grading machine can be used to test the capacity of individual lithium cells before being used in a battery pack. This way, we can make sure that all the cells used in a battery pack are of the same capacity. In this project, we'll build a cell grading module like this one, along with a software which can be used to charge and discharge a single cell and calculate its capacity. Then, as per our requirements, we can add an additional module and use it to test multiple cells. I'm going to show you how you can build these modules and also explain the schematics and code for this project. But before I do that, let me quickly introduce the sponsors for this video, DigiKey. DigiKey is a global leader in cutting-edge component distribution of electronic components and automation products worldwide. They provide more than 15.3 million components from over 2,900 manufacturers with products in stock available for immediate shipment. Also, with their fast shipping and excellent customer support, you can always trust that your products will arrive on time and in top condition. So do remember to check out DigiKey for your next project. Now coming back to the project, let's start with the schematics for this module. This is the complete schematic diagram for our project. And here is a closer look of our modules. Now ideally, each of this module would have to do three things. One, it has to charge the lithium battery. Two, it has to discharge it and calculate the capacity. And last, it has to transmit the value of voltage, current and capacity to a host computer. This schematics here does exactly that. So starting from the top, you can see that the first section is for power and charging the battery. So this is a barrel connector which has to be connected to a 12 volt and to charge the cell we are using the TP4056 battery charging IC. Moving on we have a low drop voltage regulator which you can see over here. So the entire system operates on 3.3 volt. So we have used the ADP7118 which is a low drop voltage regulator IC from analog devices. So this IC provides the 3.3 volt required for all the other components over here. Then here we find the most important component which is the microcontroller for this project. We have used the STM32G071 32 bit ARM Cortex microcontroller from ST Microelectronics. You can see the microcontroller over here and it also has another IC nearby it which is the EEPRO. So this IC manages the charging of the uh, battery and the discharging of the battery and it also takes all the voltage and current values and stores it in this EEPRO over here. Apart from that you can see other auxiliary components connected to the microcontroller like a crystal oscillator and other stuff. Moving on, you can see a seven segment display over here, which is on the front side of our module. So this is a two digit common anode seven segment display, which can be used to display the voltage value of the cell that is currently being charged or discharged. And then over here, we can see two other important ICs, which have made this module very compact. One is the INA236BI, which is a high side and low side current monitoring IC from Texas Instruments. So this IC can be found on our board over here. So what happens is we have a shunt resistor placed near this IC, which is this 0.01 ohms. So the charging current and the discharging current flows through this shunt resistor. And since this IC can read both the high side and low side voltage, with just a single IC, we can measure both the charging current and the discharging current. Moving on, we have the DC load section, which is this area. And how it works is really simple. The most important component here is the MCP6486, which you can find on the board over here. So this is a rail to rail op amp from microchip technologies. And how it works here is that it gets the set voltage from the microcontroller's DAC and then it uses this to compare it with the current discharge current which is flowing through this shunt resistor and the op amp controls the switching speed of these two MOSFETs over here so that the set current is always equal to the discharge current. So this DIAC is used for reverse polarity protection and we have shown two MOSFETs over here. One is already soldered on the board 
and the other is left empty. Now ideally one MOSFET is enough to have a discharge current of up to 5 amps but if you need a higher discharge current you can use the secondary MOSFET. Also a heat sink should be added to this MOSFET. I have removed it so that it's easy for me to explain but on this board you can find the heat sink already present. So the current from the battery is discharged and dissipated as heat. Few other important components are this trim pot over here which is used to set the discharge current. So once we tune this op amp to match the set current with the actual discharge current using this trim pot, we can directly start controlling it from the microcontroller. Apart from this, you can also see that there is RS485 communication protocol setup. So all the values stored on this EEPROM and also real-time data will be transmitted through RS-485 through these jumper connections over here. And then we have the programming pins over here which can be used to program this STM32. Now the advantage of this module is that since each of the module has its own microcontroller, EEPROM, charging and discharging mechanism, you can easily build multiple of these and cascade them together. When you're trying to cascade, all you have to do is use a 5 volt adapter to power each of these modules like this. And then you can use these RS-485 pins to cascade each of the modules. For example, if I want to connect this module to here, I can just use this jumper wire from here to here. And then once I have done cascading multiple modules, for example, I'm showing you only two here, but you can cascade multiple modules and then finally use an RS-485 connector like this. Connect this to our computer and then you will be able to read the voltage, current and capacity of all the batteries connected in the cascading setup. Now that we know how the hardware works, let's get on to a computer so that I can show you the code. Okay, let's start from the GitHub repo of this project which we have created. So you'll find three things here. One is the Gerber file for this PCB along with all the components used. The second thing is the Arduino code which goes into the STM32 microcontroller over here. In fact, let me quickly show you the code. So this is the code for the STM32 microcontroller. So basically the code is written for each of this device so that it is able to get the command from the software do the charging, discharging, whatever is needed and then also send the feedback to the software as well. Now, when I say software, it is written with processing. You can see the complete processing code over here. To show you a quick demonstration, I have used one single module over here and connected the 5 volt adapter as well. You can see the current voltage of this cell is also displayed and this is going to be connected to my computer using the RS-485 to USB converter. I'm just going to connect it over here and connect this to my laptop. Now that is done, before I launch this code, I have to change two things. One is the port to which my device is connected. So let me quickly check that. So it is still the same. I have already copied and pasted this here. And then the baud rate is 1 million. Now let me click on run and as soon as I click on run, you can see that these are the status that is being received through RS-485. Now since there is only one module connected here, it says 00, 0 at the very beginning, but you can connect up to 8 modules for this software. As you can see, there are 8 cells and if there is another module, it will say 0, 01 and then show the value of voltage, current and capacity. Now cell 1 is already being discharged here as you can see it is currently at 3.6 volt and it is being discharged at 1.96 amps which is close to 2 amps and calculated capacity so far is 241 mAh. Now this software can be used to select any of the cell which is connected to your laptop and then individually set the cell capacity, discharge current, cutoff voltage and start testing it. So this cell is already being tested, it's in the middle of the testing process. So before I stop the testing and start charging it again, let me quickly show you how the device looks like when I'm discharging. So this is the device and as you can see the last digit on our voltage will be blinking to indicate that the cell is currently being discharged. And I can also click on this plot graph button. 
to see how the voltage has changed over time. So once the complete discharge is completed, we can plot a graph of voltage over time. And as you can see here, it also says at minute one, it was 3.8 at minute two, this was the voltage at four minutes, five minutes. So the voltage gets plotted for every one minute. And once the whole discharge is completed, you can see a nice discharge curve over here. Now I'm going to abort this discharging process just to show you how to start charging a cell and how to start the testing process altogether. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to set the cell capacity, the discharge current and the cutoff voltage and click on start test. So let me give the cell capacity. So the cell that I connected is uh, 2400 mAh and the discharge current I want to keep is right now it's being discharged 2 amps but I can also keep 1 amps. And then the cutoff voltage is 3.2 volts for every 18657. So once those values are set, I can click on start testing and you can see that the command is sent. And now the charging process starts. We can tell that by looking at this red color LED over here. So the one which was beeping earlier has stopped and this red LED has turned on indicating that the cell is currently being charged. And once it is completely charged, it will start discharging again and start calculating the capacity again. So that's it guys. This is how the project works. With that, we have come to a conclusion of this video. Hope you enjoyed watching it and learned something useful. This is Ashwin signing off. Have a great day. Tata. Bye-bye. DigiKey.